Hi, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Ontario Knife Company Fish and Small Game Knife. Now, I, the reason why I got this is because I was looking for a cheaper alternative for my son. This is a perfect knife for a beginner, especially if you like the traditional Kephart style knife. Now, the thing with kids and possibly beginners is that uh, you don't necessarily may know how to handle a knife all the way, so you're trying to figure things out. Maybe you're just trying to figure out if you really like the style because there's lots of different styles out there and the spear point Kephart style knife isn't for everybody. I personally really like it and because of that, I'm a little biased, so I wanna push that onto my son and he can play around with it. Plus, as we go through this video, wait until the end because I'm gonna tell you all the reasons why this style of knife may be a really good option for you if you're a hunter, if you're a fisherman, or if you're just a camp craft or camp enthusiast. I bought this for like 28 bucks, it was on sale all last month. I figured, man, this is a perfect opportunity to get this knife. And because I'm a scout master, I'm always trying to think of, you know, cheaper alternatives uh, that are affordable for scouts to get into this. Because man, camping gear can get kind of expensive. And Ontario Knife Company has a proud history. Personally, I own an entire butcher's set of the old hickory uh, butcher knives. It's in my kitchen. I use them all the time. I honestly prefer it to my other store-bought knives. Um, I like the carbon steel. I like how easy it is to maintain the steel and it keeps an edge, which is really important when you're outdoors and you're doing woodcraft or anything else. So a lot of people tend to take old hickory knives like this butcher knife here and they turn it into a Kephart style knife. Well, several years ago, Ontario Knife Company finally caught on and decided, heck, we may as well just wait, make one for ourselves. And again, it's super affordable at around 30 bucks. So these are my first impressions about the knife. I've only taken it out of the box. I've taken a look at it um, and uh, you're going to experience what I think of, at least about this particular knife. As we open it up, you know, rectangular box, you get a sheath knife. Now, if you've seen other videos about the Ontario Knife Company, uh, fish and small game knife, you know that it's made in China. That doesn't really matter to me personally that a sheath or something else is made in China. What matters to me is the quality of the leather, the thickness of leather, and whether or not it's gonna hold up. Now, the thickness of this leather is perfectly fine. Uh, the stitching, mm, you know, the stitching could be a little bit better. The style of belt loop, see how this is here where it's got the stitching on top instead of it being looped around, that's a wear point and there's a lot of stress on that especially for outdoors. So I don't really care for that aspect of it but overall the leather in the, the finish of it looks pretty good. Now the knife is made out of 1075 steel some people are like, whoa, that's like really soft steel. You know, you want to go 1095 or 02 or stainless, you know, all these other things. Now, the nice thing about 1075 and why, especially if you're a beginner, this steel is really good for camp crafting is because when you're out in the field, stainless steel can be kind of a pain to sharpen. It holds the edge, it doesn't get rusted, but 1075 is really easy to maintain. So there's a positive aspect about it. And that's another thing that drew me to this knife, especially for younger people and beginners, because scouts, you teach them how to do it, but there's a little bit of a learning curve when it comes to that. So I think this knife gives younger people or beginners a good place to start with their knives. It's flat ground, if that matters to you, just like you would find in your regular Walmart kitchen knives or other kitchen knives. The edge is a V-edge. It's not a chisel grind. It's not a Scandi grind. It's not a, uh, a convex grind. It's just a traditional V-edge. Now, as I take out the knife and I'm just feeling it, it's a little rough. The, the finish on the handle isn't super smooth, but it's not super rough. Uh, so just take some sandpaper to it and that's no problem. The pens look really nice. It's brass pen, so they'll age well. Uh, the finish on the knife isn't mere finish, all right? It has a satin finish or a brushed finish, whatever you wanna call it, but it's just not mere finish. And the nice thing is, is this will patina nicely more you use it, especially if you use acidic vegetables and fruits. So that's pretty cool. You know, as you shake it, 
it doesn't come out. So I don't see that that's a problem at all. The fit of the steel to the handle, well, that looks okay. Like it's not perfect, but it's it's not bad either. It really bothers you. It wouldn't take much to, to finish that up. The evenness of the handle though, as it's rounded over, looks pretty good. You know, and I, I like black walnut. You know, Ohio boy, we got black walnuts all around us. Okay, I'm gonna move the camera so you can see up close some of the different things I'm talking about. So one thing I don't like is how the belt loop comes all the way and stitched here and it's stitched here. I would have preferred the belt loop to come up and over and under, that way it could be stitched with this being on the sheath itself, but a, a slight loop. That way it, there's more pressure on the leather itself than the stitching versus down here. Uh, you know, that's traditional, that's perfectly fine. And now the only thing you have to worry about is how good is the quality of the thread that was being used here. The stitching itself may not be a problem. So we'll have to see as it gets used, how it tears up, if any. But that right there, that's a weak point. That's something I don't really care for about the sheath. But everything else, you know, you can shake it pretty crazy and violently and it doesn't come out. I would have liked it to come up more on the halfway to the handle, but as it stands, it's not bad. So as we take it out, as you can see, it still has that, that flat grind. The V edge comes to a nice point. It's a spear point, and it really does flare out just like my more traditional Kephart. If we take a look at this, now this is a five inch blade. There's that. The handle is pretty close to what my traditional Kephart is. And the thickness, uh, the Ontario Knife Company knife is actually just a little bit thinner than mine. I also don't like that, that right there. I wish that they would have brought the wood up to this because as you're holding it like so, that can kind of tear you up, especially depending on what kind of force you're using and what you're doing with it. First thing I thought we would go over is curls, you know, because that's what people do with the knife. I'll later on do a tri stick with this and I'll give you my review about that. But as it is, if you've never seen my other video on the Kephart and why I like to cut this way, uh, check that out at the end of the video. No, well, that's not bad. Let's do a, a thump. Well, my initial impressions is this is kind of dull. It's not super, super sharp because my thumb's got to put a lot of pressure on that. This is dry seasoned wood. Yeah, it's not, it's not terribly sharp. Okay. Hmm. All right. All right, we're creating some fuzz. So there's that. Okay. Got a piece of fat wood here. So that's how, see how well it does with that. Spine is doing pretty good about creating that. Let's see. About the same. Okay. Okay, so there's the initial impressions about the curls, the feathers. Let's do the sharp tests with paper. So we got a piece of paper here. So it's doing okay, it's not great. So as far as my control, this is my beloved Kephart. So let's see how it does. Should have done that to begin with.
Okay. See, so that does all right. See how easy that does? And it has nothing to do with the steel of the knife. It just has to do with how sharp this one is. So out of the box, I give the, this knife a, I don't know, a three out of five for sharpness. It's sharp enough to do a task to begin with, but it's really not as sharp as it really should be. Today's video is sponsored by viewers like you on Patreon. Our patrons are the ones who I really have to give credit for pushing this channel forward because they give as little as they want or as much as they want and every little bit helps and plus they get a few added benefits so if that's something you'd be interested in please check out my patreon page the link is below in the description we'll do another test and this is actually an unfair test because uh, my kepart here just like the original kepart it does not have a 90 degree spine so i can't really get sparks of any quality or quantity using this knife because it doesn't have that scraped nine, 9 degree spine. So let's go ahead and try this the sparks on this. Does great. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Good 90 degree spine on the blade. Get out my 1930s Scout Fire Bundle here. See how it can do with flint. And for its control, again, we we'll use a different steel. So if I were to use this, show you that I can get sparks off of it. Okay. So I can get sparks off of it. Let's see if I can get sparks off of this. Okay, so getting a couple itty bitty tiny sparks, but nothing really substantial. All right, so this is my favorite test here. Uh, I know us camp crafters, we're going to be doing a lot of rope cutting and wood cutting and things like that, but we should also probably be thinking about food preparation, especially uh, if that's one of your favorite things to do in camp. But I think what we'll do is we will go with some of the toughest vegetables first and then we'll end on the tomato. My wife might not be too happy because this is our last tomato. But let's see, let's do the, uh, the carrot. The nice thing about spear points is you can kind of use it just like you would a traditional uh, kitchen chopping knife. So yeah, okay, does good there. Next, potato. Okay. I'm gonna make some hash browns. I don't normally peel my potatoes, but what if you liked to peel? Did it do all right with peeling? It does okay. Again, that has to do with the sharpness of it. Like it'll do it, but it just doesn't do it well. In its current state. It's not a reflection of the knife itself, just the edge of the knife or anything. Okay, so we got potatoes. Let's clean off this. If, if you've liked this video so far, if you found it useful, please do me a favor and go ahead and click like. That way other people find it and you'll be doing them a favor. Last test, the tomato. Let's see how it does on the tomato because really, that's what they show in the commercials anyways, right? If you have a knife that can slice through a tomato, then you got yourself a good knife. Nah, it's not really doing it. There we go. Okay, so there's a piece of tomato. Let's see how thin we can get this.
Like, it does all right, you know? Like, it's not, it's not horrible. What if we do actually do? So out of the box, it's okay. It's not as great as I'd like it to be, but it's okay. So that's pretty cool. A little four inch blade knife, which is really all you need. Kephart said you only needed a four inch knife. And my Kephart is five inches. This does all right. It slices tomatoes, it slices onions and potatoes and carrots. It'll cut wood. Uh, the only thing I would do is sharpen it because the edge on it is just not up to my standards. You could even change the edge of it if you don't like a V edge. You could make it a chisel grind if you really wanted to. You could make it a Scandinavian grind. You could make it a convex grind or whatever. Now, Kephart, he had a convex grind. The nice thing about convex grind is the strongest grind that there is. You can't go wrong with that. But uh, if you're going to use this for more kitchen tasks, then maybe you know a traditional V edge is what you want to go with. Does it do it 100%? No. The only qualm, the only problem I have about this knife is that little metal piece right there. That itty bitty tiny little piece right there. That bothers me a lot. Mainly because that's a wear point. Like I'm, my finger is already kind of getting irritated just being up against that. Uh, I'm thinking of young people or, or a beginner. You know, that's kind of a nuisance. I would have preferred that old hickory would have taken that off or done a little bit more work and brought the wood up to that point. That way it's not such an irritation. It's actually more of a support. You could still do the pinch method of slicing with this thing. It is not as comfortable as this. And what makes this so comfortable is that wood piece up there. The, I don't know if you call it a bolster or, or whatever, but that little nub of wood makes this super comfortable. And doing it on this, it's, it's awkward. Like you can do it, it's just awkward. The steel is 1075. So that means it's gonna be really easy to sharp, right? You got that going for you. The nine degree spine is really nice if you're going to use ferrous and rod, which most camp crafters in today do that. So that's a pretty nice plus. It's lightweight. If you lose it or damage it, it's cheap enough to buy a new one. The, the spear point is gonna be really good when you're making hearth boards or when you're trying to cut into fish, you know, fillet them or even process an animal. So overall, this is a great general all purpose knife. There's not a single knife out there that's perfect. So if you're looking for a perfect knife, you're never gonna find it. But for what this is, I think it's perfectly good. It's good enough to do just about anything that you would want to do with it. Now, if you'd like your own fish and small game knife, then don't forget to check out my links below. It helps the channel out. We really appreciate it. It helps push us forward. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please click like. If you wanna see more about knives and you want to learn a lot about different types of knives and you want to check out this playlist here i hope you guys have a wonderful week give a kiss up to your loved ones and i'll see you guys next time take care